Hey everyone, as you know, I like making videos that answer your questions or are based on video ideas that you guys suggest, and I got a really great one last week from Zach. Zach's comment reads, I never do this, but could you do a video explaining electrical nomenclature, basically like amps versus watts versus volts? I can't seem to find any clear-cut, easy-to-understand guide to what they mean without going into super inside baseball. Well, Zach, I completely understand your frustration here, given that a lot of the content that is produced, which covers things like electrical units, uh, is usually bundled into, like, basic circuit theory overviews, and they tend to be very academically oriented videos and articles, which can be um, a bit much for people who are just looking for a practical understanding of the units. Hopefully by the end of this video you'll have at least a basic understanding of what the units kind of are, and more importantly, what you can do with them, like calculating the time it takes to charge an EV, or how much it'll cost to charge an EV, stuff like that. First things first, this is not a video about circuit theory. I want to get that out of the way right up front. This is a video about the practical meaning and usage of these units in your daily life, not as an electrical engineer. If you need help with your physics homework, this is not the video for you. You should go hop on over to Crash Course. For everyone who's still here, let's get started. Two of the most important units you'll encounter when researching EVs are kilowatt hours and kilowatts. But before I talk about those units, let me briefly explain the concepts that those two units represent. Energy and power. Knowing what energy and power are and understanding the relationship between them will help you to identify the appropriate use for each unit. First up, we have energy. Energy isn't really a thing itself, but rather a property transferred to an object in order to perform work, like accelerating a mass, heating a fluid, or inducing a chemical reaction. The unit assigned to this concept is the joule. Power, on the other hand, is the rate of energy transfer while performing work. It can also be thought of as the rate of work performed, which can be expressed in joules per second, which has its own unit, the watt, which is defined as one joule of energy per second. At this point, some of you may be wondering where the kilowatt hour as a unit of energy fits into all of this, since a watt is a unit of power that's defined as a unit of energy transferred in a given unit of time. Uh, does this make a kilowatt hour energy per time times time equals energy? Yes, it does. Believe what you will about the silliness of this unit, but it's actually very practical in that it simplifies the math required to calculate energy usage. Electricity, energy, is typically billed in kilowatt hours, so, for example, you could determine the cost of operating a 100 watt light bulb for 10 hours by multiplying 100 watts times 10 hours, which equals 1000 watt hours, or 1 kilowatt hour. Remember, kilo is the metric prefix for thousand. This same approach can be used to estimate the cost of charging an EV. Two other units that you will frequently encounter when discussing or researching EVs are amps and volts. First up, let's talk about amps. The ampere, or amp, is a unit of electric current, which represents the rate of flow of electrons through a conductor, like a wire. Electrons carry electric charge, which is the property electric fields act on, much like mass is the property that gravitational fields act on. For practical purposes, this is represented as coulombs per second, where the unit coulomb essentially acts as a proxy for about 6.24 quintillion electrons worth of charge. The volt, on the other hand, is a unit of electric potential difference characterized in joules per coulomb. Electric potential difference causes an electric field in a circuit, which establishes a proportional current in said circuit. So, a volt is the measure of the work performed to induce electric current per unit charge. Basically, voltage is what makes the electrons move. That said, the definition of these two units is actually pretty complicated, and isn't nearly as important for the purposes of this video as what you can do with these units. Combining all of the units and concepts presented so far, you can do things like determine how long it'll take an EV to charge, ignoring efficiency, of course. For example, if you buy an EV with a usable battery capacity of 68 kilowatt hours, and you already have a level 2 EVSE at home, but it's connected to a 30 amp 240 volt breaker, and you want to figure out how long it would take to fully recharge, you'd set things up like this. Using the equation P equals IV, where P is power in watts, I is current in amps, and V is voltage in volts, you can determine the output power of your EVSE in watts. So we'll start plugging numbers into the equation here. Uh, we'll put uh, 24 amps in for I, uh, because the continuous load rating of your 30 amp breaker is actually 80% of that 30 amp maximum rating, so 24 amps goes here, uh, times 240 volts for V equals 5,760 watts. Next, you divide 5,760 watts 
into 68,000 watt hours, remember kilo means thousand, and the equation is in watts, not kilowatts, to determine how many hours of charging at 5,760 watts would be required to store 68 kilowatt hours of energy in the battery. This comes out to about 11.8 hours. I know that this was a really brief overview and I've left a lot of detail out of this for the sake of simplicity, but hopefully you have a better idea now of what you can do with these units and what they refer to. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get to them. Uh, also, don't forget to rate and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Before anyone asks why I didn't use the hydraulic analogy to describe things like voltage and current, um, it's because I don't really like that analogy. I found through experience that the analogy really isn't all that useful unless the person you're talking to already has a decent understanding of uh, fluid flow and hydraulic theory. Anyway, whatever.